Christ be beside me, Christ be before me, Christ be behind me, King of my heart. Christ be within me, Christ be below me, Christ be Together with our different intentions, we now begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my heart, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of God, all angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord of my God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, by his passion and the cross, he brought the glory of his resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, after 14 years, I again went up to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus all along also. I went up in accord with a revelation, and I presented to them the gospel that I preached to the Gentiles, but privately to those of repute, so that I might not be running or have run in vain. On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter to the circumcised, for the one who worked in Peter for an apostolate to the circumcised worked also in me for the Gentiles. And when they recognized the grace bestowed upon me, James and Cephas and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave me and Barnabas their right hands in partnership, that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. Only we were to be mindful of the poor, which is the very thing I was eager to do. And when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he clearly was wrong. For until some people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he began to draw back and separated himself because he was afraid of the circumcised and the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him with the result that even Barnabas was carried away by this hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not on the right road in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas in front of all, if you, though a Jew, are living like a Gentile, and not like a Jew. How can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? The word of the Lord. Amen. 
Responsible yourself, go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to the world and tell the good news. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have received the spirit of adoption as sons, through which we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, a Lord be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not subject us to final test. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite you, my dear brothers and sisters, to reflect on those words that come from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, inviting us to the gospel of today. You have received a spirit of adoption as sons through which we cry. Abba, Father. For you and me to know that we share one spirit in common. And the spirit that we share is the spirit that comes from the Father. That creates some sort of bond, regardless of our own origins or wherever we come from. Is a bond as Christians that is created in us. That comfortably I can call you my sister. Comfortably I can call you my brother because we share in the same Father. That we can cry out as Abba, Father. This is the foundation of our own Christian unity. Unfortunately, many times, the human element crops it, and it's not only beginning today. It has been throughout the history of the church. In the first reading, we had the disappointment of Paul when there was a clear distinction made. Paul, as an apostle to the Gentiles, and Peter, as an apostle to the Jews, the circumcised and uncircumcised. And somehow there was some sort of partiality that was created that was not even in the plan of God. Peter was very comfortable eating the food with the Gentiles, but on seeing those of James considered as pillars of the church, He excites a lot of hypocrisy. The spirit that binds them together was no more, but he was more looking at the Jews, he was more looking at the Gentiles. How can the uncircumcised freely mingle 
with the circumcised. Unfortunately, it seems like the same spirit continues in our church. It continues in our own relationship as Christians. Do you and me go beyond our differences and see each other as a brother and sister because we call out the same Abba Father? We share in the same spirit of adoption? The disciples were concerned of the need to pray. And when Jesus teaches them, he gives them that prayer that is intended to bring some sort of unity. Our Father. When I'm talking of our Father, is my Father, is your Father. It's the same Father that we share in the same spirit. Defining the instances of God and challenging us of our own relationship when we invoke God through that prayer. As we ask for favors, give us each day our daily bread. As we acknowledge our own weaknesses, forgive our sins, we are challenged. That if we are capable of sinning, if we are capable of making mistakes, if we desire to be forgiven, then we should also realize that others make similar mistakes. How do we use the same spirit of adoption, the same spirit we share from the Father, to reflect what the Father intends for each one of us? If he can forgive us, then as his own children, imitating the same spirit, we are called to exercise the same. Today we celebrate the memorial of uh, what are we celebrating? I'm checking. I'm checking if you fall. Our little one? Victory. Not victory. Of the rosary. Yeah. We can still call her our little victory. But our lady of the rosary. And this feast was instituted by Pope Pius the fifth in the 16th century. What happened was there was battle at Lempado, Lempato, and the victory was attributed to the invocation of our mother through the Holy Rosary. It was not the power of those at, in battle, but it was the power of the Rosary. And that means that we are given two fundamental prayers. In our readings today, that should help us in our own Christian witness, the prayer of our Father. That is very basic and foundation to our Christian following, and also the power of the rosary, in which you and me are called to imitate on the mysteries we celebrate. In the rosary, we encounter Christ in all the mysteries. The joyful mysteries, we know what we celebrate. The glorious mysteries, we know what we celebrate. The sorrowful mysteries, we know what we celebrate. And the mysteries of light. Jesus in ministry. Therefore, we are called to be inspired as daughters and sons of God by the rosary that we celebrate as a very powerful prayer. And we know when we invoke Mary, as she was entrusted to us at the cross, she never, never abandoned us. She always channeled those prayers to her beloved son. And just like the battle was won through her intercession, the same can be gained. When we invoke our Father, the prayer of our Father, and also our Mother in the prayer of the Holy Rosary. For the people of God, may the Spirit of Christ bring unity and peace to every heart and relationship. We pray to the Lord. 
for the world. May God help guide our priorities in protecting and serving one another. We pray to the Lord. For this, our faith community, may the love of Christ continue to help us grow in faith and charity. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may Christ welcome them into the kingdom, for the heavenly kingdom, with open arms. We pray to the Lord. Lord we now take a moment to offer those prayers that lie in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord we ask all this for Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may be rightly conformed to these offerings we bring, and so honor the mysteries of your beloved Son, as to be made worthy of his promises, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is so right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to praise, bless, and glorify your name in veneration of the blessed ever Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world eternal life. Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices we pray join theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Amen. Indeed, holy, O Lord, 
the bond of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by, make, by sending your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chest and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chest of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them to the light of your face. And my son, our son, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unit of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Amen. Father. Lord, we pray from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And gracious grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who go to the supper of the Lamb.
may divine. All praise and all thanksgiving. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. We pray, O Lord our God, that just as we proclaim in this sacrament the death and resurrection of your Son, so being made partakers in his suffering, may we also merit a share in his consolation and his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth the Mass 